Do you have any idea of the relative depth of the different deposits in this area? The, well, the deposits have been mined, have been mined to great depth, <coughs> 6,000 feet. Um, but the problem with an underground mine is that you can't, it's difficult to drill out uh, a large resource because the, the cost of drilling to great depth is so excessive. So we have to look at something that's within, say, 1,500 or 2,000 feet of the surface, uh, hopefully within 1,000 feet of the surface to be incorporated into an initial resource. Isn't it true that the smelting is more of a challenge than the refining? Because we have the refining capacity, but right now, you know, it's like Orvana. Where are they going to take their, their ore to be smelted? That's the yeah, well, biggest challenge. Yeah, the, if you have producing a calcite or a sulfide, uh, that has to be smelted. Well. And um, I know I have, don't have an answer for that. The native copper would be simply electric furnace to, to melt it down into a continuous caster, and then you make anodes. But so they could take this copper, mass copper, to to white pine with that refinery and smelt their well refine it. You could if we, you know, we haven't made a deal with those folks if right. we don't have a anything to sell for them. But, um, but, it, but yes, they could, they could do that. And, and you know, there's uh, the PCI or uh, now uh, Osmos could use some of that material as well. <coughs> but they, uh, um, they'd have to change their system. But, but they're very convenient. I mean, what's the portion of the transportation of the overall cost in the mining business? And so I guess I'm trying to figure out how sensitive is it for all kinds of fuel prices if you are in areas like this. Uh, you're talking about fuel. Um, well, it depends on you know how the where you have a um, your processing facility, how far you have to haul, whether it's going to be right near the mine site. I guess it's a little bit related to the question that if, if there's not going to be rail, then you're going to mm -hmm. be trucking. Are you going to be, let's say you truck them first to White Pine, are you going to then continue trucking them to the bigger areas of White Pine as well? Well, there's a railhead in White Pine. Well, there's a railhead in White Pine, it's not really operational. Well, we'd like to keep that. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, the most <coughs> of the in Centennial, we had a load of rail up there. Yeah, can't do that anymore. So, I, uh, it's not, you know, when that kind of analysis is not going to be done by me. Uh, that's a preliminary report, but it's, uh, it's probably wrong. <laughs> It'll be back to the experts. <laughs> should say that uh, when Homestake was here in uh, this, uh, the 70s, they did a very detailed, thorough analysis of uh, the feasibility of, of putting in a zinc smelter on a Keweenaw. And the number one thing that killed it was the cost of power. You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> Is there a fair amount of zinc? Up here, besides the copper, I mean, there's silver no. in the copper up here too. No, but it'd just be a place that, because the zinc silver is in, uh, I believe there's one in uh, British Columbia, but the, there's one in Belgium. We don't really know those zinc silvers. Sir, you mentioned land. Uh, <coughs> has it changed when you pay royalties, or you have to buy all the land? Well, the the, uh, the only agreement we have is, uh, have is for the mineral state. Um, and of course, the 
way that mineral reservation is written is rather draconian. So they basically uh, have the right to uh, to go in and extract the minerals. Uh, the reality of that is, is different. You do have to reach, I, I'm sure, you have to reach an accommodation with the surface owner. Um, that's just the way you do business now. When seeing agents here, Visualizing primarily underground operations or small open pit type operations, or is, is there any feeling for that at this point in time? Well, you know, so open pit operations are certainly a lot more efficient, so mm -hmm. your costs are cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the shape of these deposits is fairly narrow, um, and they they, deep, they dip steeply so that um, I know, uh, underground operations are probably which is good in a way of fewer, you know, less uh, surface uh, expression, uh, less reclamation to do. And I, and I firmly believe that uh, hopefully um, we can work out a system where you return most of the tailings back to the underground for support because uh, um, I tell you, that we used, at Centennial, we used the system that CNH had used for decades using open stokes, and that really scared me. Uh, and it was very inefficient in the sense that uh, even though we had the, the best productivity of any home state mine, um, we lost 15% of our ore because the stokes caved in over broken ore. That's, that's a financial thing. The other thing is I'm, I'm, you know, we could have seriously injured or killed somebody using that method. And you can't, you can't do that now. No. Uh, mining is probably um, safer than most construction now. 